matching Chicago political antics and, and fuckery. Now that we have a strong mayor system at City Hall, has that made this work more challenging for you and the city council? And has that decreased police oversight by the city council? One of the biggest battles for 2021 was around government restructure. It was a shift to take power away from the legislative branch and to consolidate it amongst the mayor, which we know the mayor um, or executive size, where the corporate establishment controls mostly. And also in terms of voter base is often the most whitest and affluent residents of our city vote and dictate the mayor. So this was a tactic to consolidate power of like, let's make the legislative branch, which in terms of proximity is the most democratic uh, representation within government. That's where, you know, the 460,000 residents are closely, their needs can be manifested. It's not through the mayor, but let's disempower that, empower this centralized role and, and give it all the authority. And specifically, let's give this character of a mayor, Mayor Fry, um, the ability to execute, you know, just executive uh, orders around anything. Um, so we knew going in, at least from my office, that there was going to be an effort to stop or diminish the pro productivity of council. And as you mentioned, the oversight functions, because there's only three jobs we really have as council members. You do policy making, you do oversight, make sure your government has its checks and balances and isn't doing like corruption. And then budget. We hold the purse of the city. We decide where money should go um, and how money should be spent. Oversight has been the like the biggest fight, at least for my office, because under the prior administration, we we're perpetually doing shicey shit. Minneapolis is always doing shicey shit. We create, we're great at creating crises, even when there's not even the need for crises. Um, and this administration has amped that up on steroids. And as a Chicagoan, it's been that's very hard to say. Like we're matching Chicago political antics and, and fuckery. Um, so there has been absolute a massive pressure campaign to stop council members like myself uh those who are coming in and putting a spotlight on the ways in which you know city hall wants to advance a hostile um exclusionary um governmental response to working class people's needs um basically silencing them sending the cops on them when they're saying we need clean air exposing when they're undercutting, you know, our efforts to get investments into public transportation and then like taking that money and go somewhere else. Like we're, we're constantly facing pushback inside of city hall. A lot of that is somewhat directly through the mayor. The mayor will like do retaliatory shit. Be like, I'll send, I'll limit cops in your ward. He'll make threats to council members like that. It's just like, okay. Or, um, make threats to, um, roll back the delivery of services like it, it, you know instruct the staff like if you need trash cleaned up okay well let's see how you like it or how your constituents would like it if trash don't get picked up for a couple of days that retaliation comes through the council because we know now we have eight colleagues that are closely affiliated with the fry administration or the fry political machinery so they're basically their his spokespersons on council so anytime we're bringing things around housing around uh, the department of public safety i brought that was the first thing i brought um as a substantial action and the mayor emailed and worked with his uh council allies to block that and funny enough we just got a report back from our harvard consultant that literally said the thing that i brought for and that he instructed to kill february of 2022 after our police shot and killed amir Locke, um was right we should have been doing so we could have been doing the, the very thing we paid four hundred thousand dollars for the Harvard consultant to be like yep you need to do that going forward we could have literally been doing that February 2022 instead of starting whatever the fuck the mayor wants to now um so uh there is definitely the efforts to be like kill don't allow council members things to be on the agenda or it really that's literally just block block and stall that has been that the motto of this council i call them a thoughts and prayers council because they literally will look at like someone burning in front of you like a resident burning and they'll look and be like i, I and they can have a, a bucket of water next to them and be like, I, I wish there was something i can do i i does it hurt i'm, I'm sorry i'm sending you my prayers and people are like there's a fucking bucket of water next throw the bucket they're like what I, I don't know what you're asking me 
to do. That is literally the disposition of this council. The most useless. Uh <laughs> and how they weaponize staff. They're constantly using staff to come out and be spokespersons of the Fry administration's wishes, like especially around, around rent control. 70,000 people voted for rent control to say council move forward with this policy. And then a year and a half later, you have staff with a report that seems like it was written by like fifth graders um, come out and say, no, actually that's not a viable solution. What we're doing is working. Um, so they're constantly weaponizing staff to like push back against council proposals. <laughs> It's been um, a challenge to, to advance working class solutions under a hostile anti-working class political climate, um, but they got the right one. Um, I'm glad my constituents recognize they, they got the right one. Um, and I'm very proud of my colleagues. Um, there's five of us who have continued to fight and continue to push, continue to cuss people out. Um, <laughs> And, and advance all these things in spite of all of that fuckery that happens.